conversation of the show this morning, we have been joined by the mayor of Belize City, none other than Bernard Wagner. Good morning, Mayor Wagner. Good morning. Good morning, Isani. Good morning. It's awesome to be here again. Um, How's television it going? viewers, it's great to be here <laughs> on OYE. <laughs> the last time we sat with you <clears throat> was on the morning of your victory. Yeah. At least that's the last time I recall having sat with you on set. It said. is the last time he was here, yes, I yes. believe. It's been several weeks since then. Uh, what's been taking place at City Hall in terms of either sort of readjusting to, you know, the beginning of another term of office? Man, Isani, it has been, um, so much has happened, like, mm -hmm. within, um, I think, six weeks, seven weeks. Yeah, more or since, less. Since um, being re-elected, so much has happened that you, you do not have the time to really um, digest what is occurring around you. Mm -hmm. You know, the um, horrible incident with our city administrator. Yeah. And I was talking to someone um, last week, last week, Friday, and saying that, man, so much has happened since we were elected we were on a really high and then we mm -hmm. went on a low and so it's about managing um emotions and um, personalities and personalities mm -hmm. and and understanding that 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 people people um have their own um characteristics um their own personalities so you have to always be managing um as a leader um, mm -hmm. those, those those sort of um personalities I love that you started with uh, the management side and what has been the current state over at the City Hall. Um, and I say that because one of the first questions that I asked you when you sat in the chair is, is there, is there a divide over at the City Council? And I'll have you use that opportunity to explain to the, our viewers what exactly is taking place there. Yeah, like I told you, um, there's always division in any organization. Um, um, it occurs in, 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 the, in the public sphere, in the private sector sphere. Um, but, uh, and you know th those type of divisions usually um, create disruption in, the, in your ability to provide a, a service for the people. Um, it's, it's sad that you, you have to, uh, in, in the public sector, be able to have to deal with these sort of disruption from internally. You could understand the, the disruption from the external side, but um, having to manage it as a leader and navigate those terrain sometimes take away from your ability and capabilities to really provide the services to the people. Um, and that, has, that is the bottom line. Yesterday we had a wonderful event, a family day event at the, at the um, DJ Park. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I always say, listen, these are the type of events, these are the type of action we need to always be pushing to ensure that we always have the people at the forefront of what we do. Mayor Wagner, let's be frank about the situation, as, as frank as possible, <laughs> without necessarily pitting you against your deputy mayor, but from an outsider's perspective, this is an individual for who all intents and purpose is extremely popular as a young man mm -hmm. in Belize City. When you look at his numbers at the polls, those speak for themselves. He wanted to contest the seat that you are now mm -hmm. enjoying for a third term. He was prevented from doing so, and you went on uncontested as the mayoral candidate. But now he comes back by way of a near unanimous vote as your deputy and as strong as a personality he may be he also has his following within the Belize City Council and so that creates a chasm where you're concerned you up on one side he up on the other side with his supporters I don't presume that any non-constructive bucking of heads is beneficial to me mm -hmm. or any other resident of Belize City who is drawing on certain services from Belize City Council. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I'll put it this way that um, in any organization, you, you, you would really want that your second in command be on the, the same page with yourself. Um, um, I always put it and, and, and compare it with, with um, 
the US. Um, Joe Biden is 82 years old, um, and he has a Vice President Kamala Harris, mm -hmm. who, despite the the age and the signing, of the, the, the age, um, you can see um, Joe Biden getting up there in age. Um, Kamala has never really, at no point in time, ever um, seen in the public, um, never, never um, really questioned mm -hmm. um, President Biden's um, leadership. And so you always would want, um, in a perfect world, that would occur, but um, people are fluid, and um, especially when you are dealing um, with... Um, young people young mm -hmm. people the young people the millennials of today uh, and the and the generation z see things different and we have to be able to appreciate that as leaders and i'm i'm hoping that that at one at some point in time the 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 deputy would be able to see that we have to work together um, so as not to disrupt the our, our ability to deliver for the people it's but difficult it's difficult when you have uh generational divide though because I can sit here and say that for the many years that I've known you you've been in a management position in one way or another nothing against the deputy mayor he comes in as a younger person he's still cutting his teeth so to speak and what have you but that divide that gap between you and him in terms of being able to be on the same plane mentally <laughs> there's a that's yeah. several years in between I, I, I do, and, and I have always prided myself in being able to, to, to develop team, lead teams um, throughout my years in the, in the banking sector. Um, when I took over at the Market Square, we had to, to totally revamp our, our, lending, our lending team there, and I did that from scratch mm -hmm. up and was able to produce some fairly very very good um, lending officers throughout the the, the bank at uh, Market Square um, I have the experience um, in, in um, managing this type of disruption um, I don't see it it um, as any impediment for our performance um, as a city council we had this um, in our last term I, I've always said that that I've never had anything easy, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. As a mayor, uh, we, we have gone through so much, um, but we have still delivered for the people, and, and that is the bottom line. We were able to deliver over 140 streets in, in the last term that we did in, in concreting, in um, chip and seal, in rehabilitating streets, and in providing the social infrastructure, providing a, a, a local economic development um, platform that is very robust, and that is driving um, entrepreneurship. So um, that aside, we, we have to, as a team, yeah. understand the dynamics here that we don't serve ourselves, we serve the people. Um, we may have differences, of course, um, but if we focus on why we are here, why we come to serve, it's not about myself being on a boat knocking glass with the big people them here and there and and um, no it's about being there for the people each and every day mayor division aside age gap between you and the deputy uh, aside i think it's it's fair to say that there needs to be some mending within uh, the belize city council uh, not only for uh, the services the, or the quality of services being provided to the citizens of Belize City, but also because your opponents are watching and they're, they're marking on their list uh, ways that they can uh, point out how the, 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 the services or the organization at City Hall is not functioning the way that it should be. How are you trying to mend this issue over at City Hall? Well, we had a wonderful session um, this past Friday. I was glad that our local government and, and rural transformation came in and really did a session on, 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 on the, the City Council Act, uh, really outlining to the new councillors, at least to the new councillors, the, the role that they play in the organization um, um, at the executive level. 
on how we interact and how we we get things done as a as a executive body as a city councillor how you can move things without really disrupting the flow chart uh, or the organizational structure how you report and and i think that i th think that really went well mm -hmm. um but it's a fluid process <laughs> all right it's a fluid process that you have to each and every day um put into context i, I don't worry about the other side um the, we were in 2018 we were slated to fail and we have never failed um, mm -hmm. um, and so I don't worry about the noise in the marketplace I continue to to um, ensure that we are, are accountable to ourselves and we are accountable to the people yeah. for the better part of the past week and a half we've been covering in the news the prospective appointment of a city administrator at the time and the subsequent appointment of a city administrator last week and all in all it's been controversial some people felt that it should have been a process where each and every voice within the city council is heard um, and some people would argue that it would have seemed unilateral in terms of how this decision to appoint Mr. Vaughan came about you are at the center of that controversy how do you respond to those criticisms? Well, the City Council Act is very clear, um, um, Isan. It is very clear, and this is nothing new that we have done. Um, or what, there is a mechanism in place on how you go about selecting a city administrator. It can't be a situation where um, you'll have the 10 councillors on that panel. Uh, the councillors have their role to play, and their role is... Uh, is in the capacity of an executive member. So we have very, very um, qualified right, and competent individuals who have served the city council at the managerial and directorship positions for years, 30 years, some of them 20, 25 years, who are in the human resource. And so we, we put together the same panel um, with some of our senior managers, um, finance, I believe, human resource, uh, myself, um, and, and two other, uh, other members, um, administrative members. And we went about interviewing the, the prospective candidates. The panel then recommend, based on how that interview went, recommend to the mayor um, for the appointment of this, in, this individual. Therein, I then take that recommendation to the caucus or the Belize City Council meeting and ask for them to debate the, 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 the merits of the recommendation. Mm -hmm. It is there that their function as a, as a city council come into play. It's not before. You can't have the executive mixing with administrative functions. And, and so we acted with, uh, myself, I acted within the, within the scope of the law. So the question then is, do you believe that this quote-unquote insurgency was deliberate? That, that this group would stand in the way of the decision that you were there to make? Like I put it in my, uh, my correspondence to them, I believe it was misguided. Okay. Right? It was misguided. It, um, um, lack of the, the knowledge of how you, 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 you um, navigate the, the municipal bodies um, and, and thankfully the local government came in this past Friday and reiterated to, to those individuals how you go about. Um, I can recall, um, and people don't see this, but when I decided to, to move along with the previous administrator, um, Candice Miller, in, in terminating her services in 2018. I did the same thing. I terminated her services and then took it to the caucus. So, um, so why should it be good on that end, mm -hmm. but bad on this end? Mm -hmm. So um, we have to always look into history, and I always tell my counselors, um, look into history, understand history. History repeats itself, that listen, Use the Belmapan as a case file. Um, 
when people or your residents see you squabbling within yourselves and within mm -hmm. with your mayor, mm -hmm. what they do thereafter is wipe you out. And that's why I asked that. <laughs> Are you so so I am telling my people learn from history. Yeah. The people vote you there not to get into squabble with your mayor. That's an excellent case study. Mm -hmm. I'll give not you that. Not to that's get <laughs> into squabble with mm -hmm. with each other, but to serve them. And when mm -hmm. you do otherwise, then they will do otherwise. Because there's an erosion of confidence, it right? Is. When when people elect a body, they or it is supposed to act as a unified front. We are not supposed to see the laundry <laughs> being aired out and you expect that we'll still have the same confidence no. in our ability yeah. to deliver the goods and services, right? You touch a correct point. It's about confidence. When people see, and it's even confidence spread across mm -hmm. the entire organization. We, we are integral as a body um, in terms of municipal securities, in terms of floating bonds. And, and so you have to always be accountable you always have to be transparent and the people have to see that you are working for them and you are delivering on the services that you say you would they don't have no time for quarrel yeah mm -hmm. let's talk about some of the services that uh, we can expect um, in this term of course your manifesto would have highlighted that but what's the first uh, project that we can expect from the City Council it's dreams it's drains, drains, drains. That's Not what very sexy, but we still like <laughs> it. We, we love At our long dreams. Last. At long <laughs> last, drains. <laughs> no, man, it's, it is drains, it is drains. That um, when we were on the campaign trail, that was what all the residents were saying. And so yes. our team has been, been very proactive in, in mm. really getting into the trenches, um, getting out the sludge, getting out the mud. Hurricane season, the right time in, mm -hmm. in June. So, right. Um, we and above active one. Are very active, <laughs> uh, uh, and man, we, we, we don't want to see any hurricanes here, but we have to still prepare. Mm -hmm. And um, that is what our teams have been doing, focusing on the drains, especially on those areas that are flood prone, in the Belama Phase 4, um, in Coney Drive right here, in the Jane Usher area, mm -hmm. um, in the Gungulung area. We have put in place various teams all across the city. I really want to look at how we can revamp how we, we service the city. I believe that the system that we have in place has not really worked. And so we are looking at how we can use GIS to, to, to get the city split up in different grids and, and being able to con conduct maintenance, um, garbage collection, um, street maintenance, and all of that in one group. So we would divide the city into different grids and have teams mm -hmm. assigned to each grid. Uh, um, that is very important as we move forward and as the city expands. We have a city of over 733 streets um, all across the city. We continue to look at our e-mobility. It has been some while um, since the buses have arrived, but we have been doing the, the wrapping of those buses, um, getting the training for the, for the drivers, getting the training for the maintenance, mm -hmm. setting up our, 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 our um, charging station. And so we do plan on rolling that out um, I can't say the date yet because we're still very fluid on how we do the training and how, how um, we get all the, the, the route for the buses um, in place, the, the bus stops, um, having our trans up working. But those are some of the key areas, um, um, Vaughn, that we, we, that we are looking at. Isani, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and uh, Mayor, you also mentioned something very important that I think is worth discussing. You mentioned the importance of tackling our drains as we approach the hurricane season. Are there any uh, steps that are being taken uh, proactively as well from the City Council to ensure that we are as ready as possible for an overactive hurricane season, as Isani mentioned? Yeah, our, our um, City Emergency Management Organization, CIMO, has been very active working along with the National Emergency Management, NEMO. Um, we have a new director there, and, and, and the prospects of they are doing the, the, shelter, um, the shelter inspection as we speak. Um, we are getting all the committees in place, understanding their SOPs, mm -hmm. um, and being ready if that call ever is made that, something, that some storm is approaching um, the shores of Belize City. Yeah. Let's go back a bit to drains. 
and the issue of being able to either clean the existing drains or to dig new drains <laughs> if that were the case because when you look at Belize City, we're very much under sea yeah, level, right? Yeah, and it yeah. doesn't take much for our streets to become flooded. Yeah. I've always pondered the idea of, in my, in my mind, I'm thinking, I've seen all these administrations come and go, and they are hell-bent on putting the cart before the horse. To say that you build a street mm -hmm. and drains are an afterthought. Yeah. But in all reality, they go together. They have to go together. So what's the point of having a nice concrete street but you don't have anywhere for water to run off in times of, of yeah, excessive yeah. rain and what have you? Yeah, they have to, um, it, uh, like what you said, it goes hand, hand in hand. Um, um, like I'm set, telling my work team that the existing streets that we did, the concrete streets, the, the mm -hmm. chip and seal streets, let us ensure that those drains on those streets are dug and mm -hmm. maintained and clean. Um, we have been actively all across the city, some uh, like the Central American Boulevard. We went in there, um, Isane, there, there was um, cement drains there, you know. Mm -hmm. But the amount of sludge we were able to take out. Yeah. And that has created that type of water hole there where the water isn't flowing. Mm. Um, we did it on King Street, we did it on Orange Street, um, we, we are doing it on Dean Street. Um, some of the flood prone areas we have tried to target. Um, most of the streets that are, that are newly constructed have earthen drains. Mm -hmm. And so that poses a problem because as the rain comes, it washes the, yeah. the, 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 the sun into the, into the drains. Um, when we dig out the drains, um, we have had some little managerial issues in how fast we are able to move the sludge back, uh, remove it from the streets because most of the times, it would get back in the drains and so we have been very active with our managers to ensure that if you dig the drain you give it you lock it in your in your system and you have that that sort of managerial system in place where you know that within three days when it is dry you will have to go back there to pick it up and these are small little things that we need to really shore up to ensure that we are ready for the hurricane season in terms of ensuring that the water is flowing that the the drains are, are um, connecting to the canals, canals to the river, and the river back out to the sea. Um, our pumping station is working. Um, we we'll continue to look at how we can collaborate further with the MIDH. As you know, that, uh, that system is, is still under the, mm -hmm. the, the, the uh, management of MIDH. Um, but we are very optimistic that um, that mechanism there will work for, for ensuring that we are able to pump out the water out of the city very actively. I want to go into another quick uh, discussion while we have you here, and that's to speak about the finances of the Belize City Council going into a third term, and of course, perhaps um, accountability mm -hmm. for the expenditures of the previous yeah. term. Where are we with that? Yeah, as you may know, we, we are closing our, our audit for, I believe, 2021. And 2022 um, those have been pending for for some time um, we are very optimistic um, based on my discussion with the with the auditors the last the past two weeks that um, they have now very close to wrapping it up and having those um, signed off by by the council and then out for publishing that is part of our mandate of being able to to um, be transparent be accountable um, we receive our, our final, our, our mandate from the Prime Minister, our general warrant for expenditure for, for this year, and it is um, in the neighborhood of $28 million in expenditure. Um, of course, when you hear $28 million in expenditure, that, that does not mean that you'll get that money. Mm -hmm. You have to find the money, mm -hmm. as I have always been lamenting that the city continues to carry a high um, receivables in terms of property taxes close to 30 million mm -hmm. um, with a portion of it obviously being penalties and interest but the people are here to see that we have worked the property taxes for them we have delivered in respect to the to the significant infrastructure and so I believe that the residents of the city will will feel compelled 
to, to um, pay in their property taxes so that we can continue the work for them. We can't do streets if we don't collect our, our fair share mm -hmm. of, of taxes and the other um, autonomous revenues. On a more lighter note, Mayor, I think one of the things that um, our viewers and, and Belize City residents enjoyed uh, during the last term was the events that would be held in different areas of Belize City where entrepreneurs could come out. Can we expect uh, more activities like that this term? More, more, more of the night festivals, of the cultural festivals. How about the gospel concert? Because people are also asking <laughs> about that too. Yeah, we were, um, we were planning on having it um, this year actually, but we were in election and so there, there was that gap. Mm -hmm. um, but we, are, we have a wonderful lineup for... 2025. All right. My team is working on on that. It will be a huge, um, huge, um, big time star. You you will have at the Digi Park yeah. for Holy Week 2025. So we are we are really looking forward to that. Um, our super seal will get off the ground very shortly. It's just about getting all our pieces back in place. We we are actively pursuing our financial director. We are we are looking to fill the roles of our internal auditor. Um, we have a rule for a senior auditor, a junior auditor, um, a revenue manager. But these are the work that I have to get in place mm -hmm. before we are functioning at 100%. Yeah. And these vacancies that you mentioned, uh, are they uh, shared online for persons yes, to... They were. And the deadlines of the vacancies? Yes, they, they, they were on, the, on our page, and I believe the deadlines have passed. Okay. I'm conducting interviews this week. Okay. For, for several of those roles. All right. Well, Mayor, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate uh, you taking the time out of your schedule to give us an update as it relates to the happenings at City Hall. We wish you all the best, and we can't thank wait you. to see thank what you. are the other activities that will be rolling out this term. Thank you. Have a great day. Thanks right. again. All right, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, the conversation switches into the Animal Medical Center on Pets, Heat, and Distemper. Stay with us. We'll be right back.